close your eyes, watch your breath all the way in, all the way out, and then in again, out again, again and again. Stay right here. Try to have a sense of ease right here as well. You can play with the breath, try different ways of breathing to see what feels good right now. And think of the breath seeping through the whole body. So there's a nice flow of energy as you breathe in, as you breathe out, nourishing the body, soothing the body. You're taking advantage of the fact that you do have choices in life, that the way you experience the present moment is not just the result of outside forces or even things that you did in the past. There's also your present choices. These also have an impact on how you experience the present. So there may be some things you can't change, but you can look at your choices and decide whether they're skillful or not. We have this ability to observe our own minds, observe ourselves in action. So we want to take advantage of that. Today's Vesakha Puja, the full moon in, what in Pali is the month of Vesakha, which, which, which corresponds to May and June. It was on this date that the Buddha was born. And then 35 years later, again on the full moon of this month, he gained awakening. Another 45 years after that, he passed away on, again on this full moon of this month. So we're commemorating three events here. But the important one is his awakening. As the Buddha himself said, having conviction in his awakening is a strength. How is it strong? Because he awakened to the power of human action. He found that human action can be trained to the point of putting an end to suffering entirely. We live in a world now where someone has done that. And as he said, it wasn't just because of qualities that he had and nobody else had. It was because of qualities he had that everybody potentially has. Simply a question of learning how to develop them. So this is a story that relates, relates directly to your choices as you go through the day, every day. Because as he said, if you act on greed, aversion, and delusion, it's going to lead to suffering. If you learn how to train the mind to be free from these qualities, then there's no suffering at all. So you look at your actions each time you do something, each time you say something, each time you think something. The story of the Buddha's awakening has a role to play in the, in the decision. He's encouraging you to be as skillful as you can. In other words, be as harmless as you can. And try to develop positive qualities inside, starting with generosity, virtue, and all the good qualities of mind that come with the meditation. So when you really have conviction in this principle, okay, that makes you stronger in doing good. And that's the kind of strength that really matters. Physical strength comes and goes. You get bigger as you grow up, and you see yourself just getting stronger and stronger all the time. But then there comes a point where it turns around. And this doesn't work, that doesn't work. Things you used to be able to do, now you can't do anymore. But the strength of the mind doesn't have to be that way. It can be developed all the way to the point of putting an end to suffering, no matter what your age, young, old, men, women, children, all kinds of people can do this. So that's the message of the story of the Buddha's awakening, and having conviction in that message is a strength. It strengthens your goodness so that it doesn't have to depend on other people's opinions, other people's ideas, but other people's behavior. Most of us go through life, our goodness depends on other people being good to us. We have goodwill for people who are good to us. We're kind to people who are good to us. People who are not good to us, we turn around and become somebody else. But if your goodness is independent of their behavior, then you can be good to everybody. That becomes your good karma. That's the karma you take with you when you go. You don't take your old animosities. Because if you take animosities with you, it's going to, they're going to lead to suffering down the line. So learn how to make your goodness independent, based on this conviction that, yes, the Buddha really did awaken, and he really did awaken to the end of suffering. And as he said, keep in mind the idea, if he can do it, you can do it too, because he was a human being. 
you're a human being. He simply took the qualities we have in the human mind, good qualities in the human mind, and he decided to see how far he could go with them. So he didn't just sit there accepting whatever comes up. He learned, again, okay, there are things that you can change in the present moment. Look around in, outside, look around inside. You see there's a lot you can change for the better. That's when your strength is really well used. <laughs>